The modern trombone isn't really much different from its medieval predecessor, known as the sackbut, with its distinctive S-shape, hand slide, and bell section. It's a blast from the past, and a pretty loud one, but it can also sound smooth and mellow. The trombone literally slides down to the low notes. It's the only instrument with a hand slide to lengthen it in order to change pitch. To make a trombone, they cut sheet brass in the pattern of a bell stem. They shape it by wrapping it around a steel rod. Using a nylon-headed mallet, the worker hammers the brass to shape it further. It takes just a few minutes for him to hammer out a rough bell stem form. He spreads open the stem slightly, so he can make small notches on one edge with snippers. Then, with a brass-headed hammer, he taps down the notches so they hold the edges together. With an acetylene torch, he joins the notch seam, melting in a brass alloy wire to bond it securely. But the seam overlaps and it's too thick, so he runs it through a seam roller. Two tons of pressure thins it, but now the bell stem is too flat. To round it out, he shoves it onto a bell-shaped rod and hammers it back into shape. Then he irons out the hammer marks with rollers. The bell stem, fitting loosely on a steel mandrel, goes through a draw bench. A hydraulic cylinder pushes it through a thick lead washer, pressing it tightly around the mandrel to its shape. To make the bell flare to attach to the stem, he puts a brass disc on a spinning lathe. Using pliers, he turns the edges of the disc to prevent it from flapping while spinning. With a lever, he manipulates a scissor spinning tool, pressing it against the turning brass disc. This shapes the disc into a flare. Making a trombone flare is a delicate business and is the work of a skilled craftsman. Getting it right is critical because the shape will affect the tone of the trombone. Next, with a torch, he brazes the flare to the bell stem. The bell stem and flare now turn on a mandrel, while he presses against the seam with a wooden tool. This flattens the seam and gives the bell its final shape. Now it's time to make the tubing. A hydraulic cylinder pulls it on a mandrel through a die, stretching it considerably. In this way, both the diameter and thickness of the tubing are precisely controlled. Then they become ice tubes after they're filled with water and put in the freezer. The ice will keep the thin tubing from buckling in the next process. With a lever, he bends the tube around a U-shaped block. As he works it into a U-shape, the tubing hardens. After the ice melts, he places the U-bend in a balling out die. He lubricates the tubing with oil and places a steel ball at the top of the tube and presses it down. He drops in smaller balls and they push the first larger ball through the U-tube. This stretches the inside of the tube, rounding it to the correct diameter. And then the balls exit at the other end. Now, he pieces the tubes together and solders them, the same way a plumber joins copper tubing. He adds a loop for the valve section. In total, a brass trombone has nine feet of tubing. Straightened, that's enough to reach from the floor to the ceiling. But of course, trombone makers are more interested in musical highs and lows. Finally, he solders a brace into place to add structural strength to one of the loops. A diamond tip tool engraves the company logo onto the trombone's bell stem. And a cloth buffing wheel spins against the trombone flare to polish it. This custom trombone has been built in approximately 50 hours, something worth blowing a horn about.